Hello and welcome to Diamond Dave's workshop. Today I'm going to talk about tools. Now there's no point carrying all of the workshop with you. A, you probably haven't got the payload for it and B, you probably don't need everything. But it is useful to have a few tools on board. I carry this kit, which is some screwdrivers, snips, pliers, a torch, nice and useful tool, magnetic base on that, so if you're working underneath a vehicle, that would stick to the chassis. A good heavy duty tyre compressor. This will inflate a motorhome tyre from nothing to 80 psi in about 10 minutes. A lot of the cheap ones won't. This is not a cheap one, this is a twin cylinder unit. It's a good powerful unit and it'll do the job well. So it's worth having. Tool kit over here gives me the basic sockets that I need for most jobs, spanners, screwdrivers, a sharp knife, grips, to tackle most jobs that I'm likely to come across, and a digital multimeter. Now that's a really useful tool if you know how to use it. That can help identify a blown fuse, a broken wire, a burnt out bulb. So let's have a look how we can use that. Just clear these bits out of the way. And I've got a little demonstration board here to show a few faults and how we can use a multimeter to find them and cure them. So first thing we need is a power source. So there's our battery. So if I now connect to the battery, that gives us some power. And if I switch on, oh, it's not working. What's gone wrong? Right, we turn to our trusty voltmeter, digital multimeter. Most meters will have a selection of connections for the test leads. Com is common, so the negative, the black lead goes on there. We want to measure, we want to measure volts, so the red lead goes in the one marked V. On the scale here, we've got several settings. The first one is V, volts, with a straight line and dashes underneath it. That indicates DC, direct current. That's what we get from batteries, that's what we need to be measuring. So if we switch that to V, volts. Now the first test we need to do is the battery. Have we got power in the battery? Not very much. We've got 9.6 volts. So that battery is pretty much dead. So let's get rid of that and get a decent battery on the job. Now before I connect it, I'm going to check this one, make sure it's got charge in it. Positive, red to the positive, black to the negative. We've got 12.8 volts, so that's fine. This will do the job for us. So we'll connect up. We've now got power. Oh, the light still doesn't work. We've got another fault somewhere. So now we use our meter to test so we've established we've got battery power, 12.8, that's fine. Now when you're testing circuits, make sure that the negative lead has got a good earth. There could be more than one fault here. It could be a blown fuse. We'll check that here. 12.8, so we've got power to the fuse. 12.8, we've got power to the other side of the fuse, so the fuse is intact. If you're checking a fuse, don't just look at it. It can look perfectly good, but it can still be open circuit, especially a small fuse like this at three amps. The wire inside is like a hair, it's so fine. So when you're checking a fuse, test it with the meter. Now we do that by switching to ohms resistance. And just to make sure the meter's working properly, if we touch the two prongs together, we read zero. If we separate them, we get OL for open circuit. So we put the prongs of the meter across the fuse, we get a reading of zero. So that fuse is good. We can now put that back in circuit. We know that's okay. And the light still doesn't work. So we've still got a fault. What else could it be? Well, it could be the switch. So going back to our volt scale, and again, putting the negative of the test meter onto the battery, we can come around the back and we can test at the switch. And we've got voltage at the switch. 
and we've got some voltage out of the switch. So the switch is okay, we've got a broken wire. So we've got a wire that has come off the switch. So if I just hold that on, and it still doesn't work, but I've just discovered this. The negative from the bulb has come adrift. It's no longer connected to the negative of the battery. So if I reconnect that and reconnect the switch, we now work. It's a logical sequence of investigation needed to solve the faults. First off, make sure that your battery is working. The meter will tell you. You can check bulbs, you can check fuses. It's all fairly straightforward stuff, but you just need to know what you're looking at and how to use the kit. Hope you found this helpful, and I'll see you next time.